Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I make videos about interview preparation, HR questions and how I got selected for the major IT companies. If you find this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. Hello everyone. So like I've posted earlier on my YouTube channel also, I recently got selected for the TCS digital profile uh, through on campus and therefore wanted to share more about the insights of TCS. Uh, every year, TCS also conducts TCS Explore exam or assessment, which is basically an exam for all the candidates, whether they belong to the digital profile or the ninja profile. The main purpose of this exam is to provide some benefits to the candidates. Uh, although there are a lot of benefits, but I'll be mentioning the two major ones, which is a joining bonus. Whatever you score in the exam, depending upon that, you can get a bonus which can, you know, range max to 60,000 or 60K. And it can, you know, also help in reducing your training period uh, from three weeks to one week. Again, all these benefits depend on how well you have scored. I'll be explaining about the exam pattern and how you can, you know, score well. I also gave this exam recently and I got 80 plus in it. So I'll be mentioning all of the details that I went through. Okay, uh, there's one important thing that I would like to mention is that it's not a compulsory exam. A lot of students are confused and you know fear that it's a compulsory exam and they would end up losing the offer if they don't perform well in it. That's not the case. It's just, you know, like I mentioned, it's just for the uh, benefits and not anything else. It won't affect your joining letter. So some basic things about this exam is that it mostly starts uh, in uh, November last week, maybe or in December after, you know, all the selections or all the placements have been done by TCS and everybody has received their offer letter. It usually happens twice a month, sometimes thrice, depending upon the frequency, uh, like they want to uh, make sure that a particular year and uh, it happens on Sundays. One more thing that this paper, like you can appear for this paper only in two languages, that is Java or Python. But personally, I think that the level of the paper is not very tough. If you are thorough with the concepts of OOPS, that is object oriented programming, and you like code in a different language besides these two, still you can, you know, study well and, you know, give this exam. It's not a very major issue. So one more thing, like it has no negative marking. So uh, just go ahead and, you know, give this exam and, you know, try to mark all the MCQ questions. Like uh, don't, you know, skip any questions since there's no negative marking and you might up, you might end up getting good numbers. So don't uh, worry about that. Uh, okay, so now I'll be explaining more about the exam, like uh, the exam pattern. It basically has two sections, that is the MCQs and the coding sections. Um, the duration of this whole exam is uh, two hours and a total score of 100 is given for all of the questions. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, it has MCQs and as well as coding questions. In all, there are total 50 questions, 50 MCQ questions ranging from a variety of topics. And every question stands for one mark. That is 50 score, 50 score is for 50 questions. And the coding questions... It has, you know, two questions there. One is a simpler question and one is a complex question. And the cumulative or the total of both the coding questions is again 50. So, uh, like I mentioned, you can attempt this paper either in Java or in Python. Uh, this whole exam is like divided into two sections. Group one or the section one is like common for all the test givers, uh, whether you're giving it in Java or Python. And the second section depends upon the language you opt for. So uh, like you can see on the screen uh, in section one, uh, there there are MCQs that is KYT, which is which stands for know, know your TCS. There is BizSkill. Uh, Unix and UI. All of these questions, you know, they are total, uh, like you can see on the screen, 5 KYT, 5 Biz Skills, uh, 5 Unix and 10 UI questions. And all of the all of them stand for one mark each. That is a 25 total for the common section. In group 2, 
there is MCQ and SBQ, which stands for Speed Balance Question. Uh, in MCQ, there are uh, there are questions from SQL, PLSQL, and Java. Mind that uh, only SQL and PLSQL have five questions each, but Java here has fifteen questions. Um, mostly they are output based questions like uh, a code is given in java and like what would be the output of this it you know basically depends upon the logic and like how thorough you are with the concepts of you know for loop and all the loops and like uh, arrays and data types in java like what kind of uh, error they can give if some semicolon is missing all of that so you know just focus on the error part and the output part for this mcq section of java okay in the coding question uh, there's one more thing like although the mcqs are like more a number like they're 50 in number but still they just you know uh, constitute to 50 percent of the exam the coding questions together form 50 marks out of the 100 marks of the paper so it's important that you you know focus on your coding part as well also, like there's no uh, separate sections for uh, the pay for each of the questions in the exam. Uh, like you can, you know, easily navigate through your questions. Uh, you can even go to your coding questions first and then come back to MCQs. So it depends on you, like how well you manage your time there. Uh, there are no, you know, restricted time time sections for the questions. Okay. So for the coding questions, uh, one is a simple question. Uh, which uh, is uh, for I think 15 marks and one is a slightly complex question personally I feel that it's not very difficult to you know uh, solve it but it's a lengthy question like a lot of classes getters setters uh, everything is being used there so it just takes a lot of time so you know it's my personal advice that if uh, you can you know practice these questions beforehand and you know you can practice your coding speed it would really help you in the exam because i think solving the question is not a task completing the question on time is a task so focus on that focus on your speed uh, similar to java python also has a similar section the first common section and in the second section uh, only changes that uh, here 15 python questions would be there uh, I think they are also based on output and everything like go for Python if you like have uh, some knowledge about it like if you have done some coding or you know have some grasp of it and again two questions first is the simpler question in coding and second is the complex question as for the resources um, I think Although TCS provides you with a lot of courses, you can always and you should go through them if you plan on joining TCS. It's essential that, you know, you have a basic understanding of what uh, domains they work on and like what all information is required to learn. Uh, but besides that, you know, just to, you know, get uh, your revision done last moment, you can always visit W3 schools, Java T point, Geeks for Geeks and Tutorials point. So what you can do is like, uh, mean, is there your Java MCQs or your Python MCQs? You can easily search MCQs, top 50 MCQs or anything like that on any of these websites and just, you know, practice those. There are all, a lot of, like I mentioned earlier, output based questions available on uh, Geeks for Geeks. You can always go through them. As for the UI section, which is uh, the part of the MCQs, uh, I think W3 Schools provides good resources for UI. You can, you know, refer uh, it from there. There's just one thing that you have to have good amount of practice, you know. Uh, this paper is not tough. Again, I'm repeating myself. It's just that time management is important here. So use these websites to practice your MCQs and you are good to go. Uh, for coding questions, um, I if you want, I can make a separate video for it and, you know, explain like how the questions are to be solved. I have personally seen that uh, like they are not very, you know, there's the questions really do not vary a lot. They just need to see your oops concepts and like how well you can make classes and you can, you know, create getters, setters in Java, all of those. So even if you're new to Java or Python, just, you know, go through 
how classes are created it's very essential and like how input is taken in java through scanner and all and like what all data types are there and basic you know functions like how they are created and what all is the syntax for it and like everything uh, the default modifiers everything just you know have a good grasp over the oops concepts and you're good to go um one more thing uh the questions in coding like they're pretty detailed i won't say that they're lengthy but they're very detailed because they give you every explanation about like how you want uh, how they want the classes to be created what all functions should be there what all data types should be there so do not you know panic or get scared looking at the length of the question just they are very detailed that is why they look lengthy and it's good that they you know tell everything and every aspect of the you know function and the data type beforehand so through all these methods and through practicing on these websites i also managed to score uh, in the range of 80 to 100 so yeah like i mentioned earlier i'll be telling you about what uh, the ranges and the bonuses mean so if you manage to score in the range of 80 to 100 your bonus is around 60k that is 60000 uh if you manage to score between 55 and 80 you get a 40000 incentive uh if your score is below 55 then i think you're not uh, applicable for the bonus but don't worry you can again attempt uh, this paper like you can again sit and give this exam like i mentioned it happens twice every month and it keeps happening i think till march so uh, you know ne- prepare well for your next exam and again try to you know score above 80 um if in case you do not manage to score again like above 55 in the next paper also it's not an issue like i mentioned it's just to you know give you a joining incentive a joining bonus it won't affect your profile yes you would get some benefits but like you won't end up losing your offer that's for sure uh yes so this is how you can prepare for your explore exam pro tip again uh, would be time management you know try to speed through your mcqs and your coding part and do not panic uh, try to you know um, if you have the access to the tcs courses uh, and the you know common announcements all of these communities uh, i think a lot of people have posted some sample questions there like what they attempted so you can always go through there and you know you can see like what type of java questions or python questions were there and you can practice um so yeah and have a thorough understanding of the classes and the oops concepts that is for sure uh you are good to go in this exam it's not difficult have faith if you can clear the main exam and get selected for tcs this is way simpler than that so all the best thank you and if you want to know any more thing about this exam or if you want a detailed video about the questions comment down below and i'll be happy to make Okay thank you bye bye